Have you ever wondered how the ancient Egyptians viewed love and marital relationships? Were they so different from us? Or did they have more in common than we imagine? Get ready for a journey back in time where we will unveil the romantic secrets of the Nile's banks, discover how marriages worked, family values, and even unusual practices to determine pregnancy and the sex of babies. In this video, we will explore everything from marriage arrangements to the deep bonds of love reflected in Egyptian art and poetry. You will discover how fidelity was valued, the curious contraceptive methods of the time, and the freedom that women had in their love lives. But before we start, subscribe and activate the notification bell to receive new episodes. Upon arriving in Egypt, the renowned Greek historian Herodotus was surprised by the social customs, differentiating them from any other civilization, empire, or nation he had encountered. He boldly criticized the Egyptians for their unconventional approach to common human practices, including marriage, intimate relations, and public displays of affection. Herodotus's encounter with Egyptian society was an enlightening revelation and today we embark on a fascinating journey to explore the intriguing dynamics of love and marriage in ancient Egypt, as well as the reasons behind Herodotus's profound astonishment. In ancient Egypt, marriage was predominantly arranged and monogamous, although it was known that pharaohs deviated from this norm. However, the primary purpose of marriage was to fulfill social functions, such as maintaining community stability and ensuring generational progress, rather than satisfying individual aspirations. Historical evidence suggests that marriage held deeper significance for the ancient Egyptians. Romantic love and companionship were equally valued, as reflected in the abundance of art, poetry, and other creative expressions from the New Kingdom, celebrating the virtues of a beloved partner or spouse. Let us consider the case of Pharaoh Tutankhamun, whose legacy is often overshadowed by his remarkable tomb rather than his accomplishments during his reign. Within this tomb, there are exquisite depictions of Tutankhamun and his wife, Enka Cinnamon, captured in intimate poses. Notably, these paintings vividly convey the deep affection shared between the couple through their physical proximity, tender gestures, and captivating expressions. Much of the Pharaoh's tomb is adorned with this art, serving as a testament to their unwavering devotion. Tragically, historical records cease to mention Enka Cinnamon shortly thereafter suggesting the possibility of her premature death, mirroring the early death of Tutankhamun himself at the tender age of 18. The depiction of husbands and wives engaged in shared activities, such as eating, dancing, and working together, was a recurring theme in tomb paintings. This artistic representation reflected the social structure of ancient Egypt, which revolved around the concept of the nuclear family. The gods themselves were also organized into similar groups. When a young man reached adolescence, it was considered appropriate for him to seek a companion and establish his own family. Women, on the other hand, were deemed ready for marriage after having their first menstruation. It was expected that men, however, would reach a slightly older age before marrying. Typically, the ideal age for men to become betrothed in ancient Egypt was between 16 and 20 years, as this allowed them to secure employment and support their future families. It is intriguing to note that ancient Egypt did not partake in wedding ceremonies, Instead, a woman was considered married to a man when she entered his house after reaching an agreement on property. Similar to other civilizations of the time, marriages were typically arranged by parents, with the bride price and reciprocal gifts exchanged between families. The groom would often present gifts to the bride's family and his wife. Prenuptial agreements were customary, and any property brought by the bride into the marriage remained under her ownership and control. Marriage in ancient Egypt had a dual purpose procreation and the cultivation of love and respect between partners. The act of marrying was synonymous with starting a family, a sacred duty upheld by religious beliefs. Men were expected to love their wives, almost as a matter of faith. In ancient Egyptian society, women held significant importance as it was believed that the goddess Isis granted equal power to both sexes during the creation of the world. However, there was a slight inclination towards male dominance. Traditionally, women assumed the role of housewives, while the ideal scenario involved the newly married couple quickly moving into their own residence. According to legal provisions, 
the individual ownership of premarital property was preserved for each spouse, while property acquired during the marriage was considered communal. Unlike ancient Rome or Greece, marriage in ancient Egypt was purely a secular matter, devoid of any religious significance. Marriages in ancient Egypt were not subject to scrutiny or regulation by the state or religious institutions. There was no requirement for marriage registration, and this was not a concern for either party. The only semblance of a formal ceremony was the creation of financial contracts or marriage agreements, which were drawn up by the parents of the betrothed. These contracts were signed in the presence of witnesses, serving as the only ritualistic aspect of an Egyptian marriage. While it was customary for members of the ancient Egyptian royal family to marry their siblings, the idea of intrafamilial marriage was generally discouraged among commoners and nobility. Instead, marriages were arranged with the goal of maximizing mutual benefits in the hope that love would develop between the couple over time if it did not already exist. Egyptians took great pride in their lineage, placing importance on both maternal and paternal ancestry. Despite living separately, the culture placed a strong emphasis on respect for parents, elders, and the concept of family, which was the cornerstone of their moral values. The eldest son or daughter had the primary responsibility of caring for their parents in their final days and ensuring a proper burial for them. In ancient Egyptian religion, the act of procreation held great significance, a theme that Herodotus found uncomfortable due to the Egyptians' open discussions about making love. Unlike many modern religions, which rely on fantastical stories of stork deliveries, ancient Egypt adopted a more progressive approach. Interestingly, honey and crocodile dung served as the main contraceptive methods of the time, leading to early pregnancies for Egyptian women. Regardless of social class, children of both sexes were cherished and eagerly awaited in Egyptian families. The absence of any evidence indicating female infanticide further highlights the culture's commitment to gender equality. In the realm of determining the sex of a baby during pregnancy, as well as fertility and pregnancy tests, various methods were developed. One example is the practice of married women urinating on plant seeds in the fields to check for pregnancy. However, there was an additional layer to this practice. Pregnant women were instructed to water two types of plants, barley and emmer wheat. If the barley sprouted first, it indicated a boy, while the germination of emmer wheat signified a girl. If the urine had no effect, it meant the woman was not pregnant. Although there was some scientific basis for this test, as pregnant women produce hormones that can stimulate early flowering in specific plants, there is no known correlation between these plants and determining the sex of the baby. The arrival of a new baby brought immense joy and deep concern to the ancient Egyptians, as the infant mortality rate was alarmingly high, and the childbirth process posed significant risks to the mother's life. Instead of viewing childbirth as a medical condition, it was considered a natural event, and therefore midwives were typically responsible for assisting in delivery. In Egyptian society, children who survived past the fifth year could generally anticipate a full life, as indicated by skeletal remains suggesting an average of 33 years for men and 29 years for women in peasant communities. However, individuals from the upper middle class could expect a longer life expectancy ranging from 50 to 70 years. Much like today, children in ancient Egypt had plenty of time to play, but as they grew older, they were also expected to receive training and preparation for adulthood. Boys were required to learn their father's trade and become skilled professionals in that field, while girls, unless of royal lineage, were trained in domestic management, including caring for the kitchen, young children, the elderly, and pets. In contrast to the emphasis placed on virginity in many traditional religions and civilizations, ancient Egypt did not attribute importance to sexual activity before marriage. The absence of a word for virgin in the ancient Egyptian language suggests that the frequency or lack of sexual relations was not considered significant. However, fidelity within marriage was highly valued, and couples were expected to remain faithful to each other and practice monogamy. The ancient Egyptians placed importance on sensuality, and their religious beliefs centered on ideas of fertility and procreation. Single women had the freedom to engage in sexual relations with whomever they wished. During the Old Kingdom and Middle Kingdom in ancient Egypt, the solicitation of sex was surprisingly scarce, with no identified brothels or mentions of such in written works or legal decisions. 
This is quite remarkable, considering that premarital sex was widely accepted at the time. The Ebers Papyrus, a document from the 15th century BCE, even provides a list of popular contraceptives used in ancient Egypt. However, the Egyptians prioritized social harmony, which is evident in the emphasis they placed on stories that promote domestic tranquility. Numerous poems celebrate the joy and happiness experienced by lovers and spouses in each other's presence. With our hands intertwined, my body trembles with joy and my heart races as we travel side by side. I was promised to name and taken to Capta's residence that night, where the Pharaoh granted me a generous offer of silver and gold. That night, my beloved husband embraced me, finding solace in my presence. We shared countless passionate moments, enveloped in a deep love for each other. There is no girl more stunning than her. She possesses the brilliance of a rising celestial body with captivating eyes that allure and lips so seductive that they beg to be kissed. While it was customary for Egyptians to genuinely care for their life partners, this did not imply that they were obligated to remain married if difficulties arose. The concept of paradise was never meant to turn into confinement. In ancient Egypt, marriages were intended to last a lifetime and extend into the afterlife. Given that most men lived up to 30 years and women often died during childbirth around 16 years old, the idea of reuniting in the afterlife provided comfort. Similar to any other era, not all marriages were happy and some ended in dissolution. The dissolution of a marriage was as simple as its inception. One or both spouses initiated the divorce process and the assets were divided according to the prenuptial agreement. A new agreement was then signed, officially ending the marriage. In the case of divorce, the mother automatically retained custody of the children. Despite the prevalence of cautionary tales about unfaithful women in literature, women enjoyed significant social freedom within the institution of marriage. Anything a woman brought into the marriage would remain hers to keep after the dissolution. Only an accusation of infidelity, supported by substantial evidence, could deprive a woman of her rights in a divorce. During the New Kingdom era, both laws and marriage agreements became increasingly complex. In the event of a divorce, the dowry given by the groom at the marriage would be returned to the wife for her sustenance or replaced by a lump sum payment. Another possibility was for the husband to provide ongoing financial support in the form of monthly allowances until his ex-wife remarried, even if they did not have children together. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments about your reaction to the revelation that ancient Egyptian society was as progressive and forward-thinking as ours. Additionally, share with us which civilization or era you would like us to explore in future episodes of this series. And as always, we sincerely appreciate your support and continued viewership. Until the next episode on Historical Facts.